Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Winter, and I'm here in 2021 with a StarCraft II early game slash build order unit tier list. Now, the game hasn't changed significantly over the last couple years. We kind of narrowed it down to uh, flirting with the queens having more or less range. Uh, the Void Ray got a slight discount, and Shield Battery Overcharge continues the trend of Protoss's best early game being their buildings and not their units. But we have a whole set of units in front of us. Almost every single one can be brought out in that early game, but we're going to rate them for you. We're not talking about, I'm not trying to, though, uh, Sarah, if you want to shout out this video, I'd be much, uh, I'd much appreciate it. I, I have a sneaking suspicion he's not going to be as interested as maybe uh, some of the lower level players out there. Uh, and believe it or not, they still exist. And uh, hopefully they can debate this all after liking and subscribing the comments and all that, get it out of the way. So, what do I mean by early game? I mean the first up to about 100 supply. We're talking early mid game, your early build orders, ideally involving more than one unit, but it, it really depends. Uh, I tried to set this up in order of each race, but every single time I tried to set up the page, it, it just jumped back to this. And uh, Jimmy is not very good with the technology, so... Uh, we're going to be going through, and it's important to know when, where, and why the units of the other races, because obviously you're going to be, in a perfect world, fighting them at least two-thirds of the time, but since your race is the weakest, obviously, uh, it's most of the time that you're fighting against those others. Well, let's break it down. So, what are we going to judge this on? One, we're, we're kind of targeting a gold player, I'd say, but maybe a couple leagues on either side, around 3k, 2 to 3k MMR, where I found a lot of players, just based on what I've seen, uh, struggle with figuring out what, when, where, and why, uh, even answering a single one of those questions when it comes to the early game units. So we're going to be judging it. What's a, what's a Code S unit here? What is a Code S unit? Well, I'm not going to spoil it yet, but a Code S unit is a unit that, essentially in every single matchup, in Protoss versus Terran, uh, Protoss versus Protoss, Protoss versus Zerg, for example. A unit that can almost always be good as part of that early game opener, even if it takes a little effort to get to. And, um, while it might not be perfect at all times, it's almost never a bad choice. An A unit is maybe something that's very good in one matchup, but just suffers in, uh, others. I think I'd use, uh, we'll, we'll have to get to it, but I'd probably use the Baneling, as an example, like Banelings can be good against Protoss, they can be good against Terran in the early game, but they're quite good against Zerg for many different reasons we'll get into. And then, of course, the difficulty of using the unit, like Adepts are a great unit, but they take a little bit of a... Uh, uh, they take an intimate touch, and by that I mean you need to be staring at them most of the time, otherwise things go horribly wrong, unlike, say... Uh, a Liberator, which is uh, you set it up, you're good to go, and even though a lot of players like to think they just stare at it and that's how it does damage, no, it, it'll fire on its own, believe it or not. And then, of course, whatever weaknesses. So um, I'm realizing that how, who sets these things up? Like, really? Okay. Did, did we not learn our letters here? Uh, excuse me for scribbling. Um... Not that it matters particularly much. You know how these things go. Like when we're looking for low-energy YouTube com content to like and subscribe to and pretend we play StarCraft, well, here we go. Let's get started. The Adept. The Adept is the most... It's the unit that brought Neeb to be a household name. Uh, you guys remember when Neeb played Terran in Heart of the Swarm. Uh, the WCS player Neeb, the Terran. You don't. Well... The Adept changed all that when Neeb switched to Protoss and Legacy of the Void to great success. The Adept has been nerfed several times since then. It currently is a strong, uh, like, it, it minimum a B here because it's not your best choice against Terran, I would say. It's a decent choice against Protoss in that early game when you're trying to get in. Early game being below 50 workers, usually below three bases, especially for Protoss and Terran. Maybe not your first unit, but your first set of units. So the Adept is going to find itself... It's just so dangerous against Zerg. Every Zerg is terrified of the Adept all-ins. 
And uh, I don't. I think that has to just put it in A because it's such a threat to Zerk, and it it does. It is difficult to use. Well, I was already talking about that, but even when it doesn't go perfect, it can still go very well. It it's pretty hard to screw up the adepts to the extent that they're not worth investing over other things. Relatively cheap. Uh, it I obviously has a lot of mobility. You just got to be a little careful about. Uh, getting, well, one, staring at your adept so much, literally nothing else is happening, and two, uh, figuring out, like, like for example, if they build a bunch of roaches right off the bat, or they got siege tanks. Um, it's more of a Protoss versus Zerg unit than anything, but it's just so damn good at it that I, I think I'm going to have to leave it at A. Of course, this is going to be flexible right up until the end. The Archon, I want to put it at S. You know I love Archons. But in the early game... I think Archons have to dip towards a B. Maybe even a C. Uh, why? As time goes on, they definitely move up. Mid-game, 100% at least an A. Later on, etc., etc. But But in the early game, the Archon essentially means you have to micro. In the later game, not so much. But in the, in the early game, it means your Templar have had a dramatic run-in with things that they probably shouldn't have met face-to-face. And if you were lucky, they survived to become an Archon. So you've already got now this Archon you're responsible for. Not something you really want to be dealing with early on. It's pretty expensive to just go for. It's not your target, though it may end up happening. It's not the worst thing to have, but I don't think Archon rushing is the way anyone at any level should be going. Nowadays, except for maybe Asterisk, Zest, but Zest, Asterisk is is sent just a kind of a standing order the baneling the baneling the baneling the baneling banelings baneling busting for for many players who really haven't changed up their build since like 2012 i'll admit i i first got masters pretty as zerg pretty much off baneling busting on two base and every zvz but i've moved on i now take three base so Honestly, in the early game, the Baneling is still a, a C. In ZVZ, it's a good choice, but only if you don't know how to wall off and go Roaches. Uh, against Terran and against Protoss, it's just not as good as other options. It, it Remember, a Baneling only attacks once, and it's very sad the more you think about it. But it rarely in Legacy of the Void, with the economies being so high right off the bat, it, it really justifies... The cost of a Baneling, you have to go all in with it, which which doesn't give it much versatility. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to use a fa- Like, it feels like, oh, I, I got six Banelings and I killed 15 probes. Yeah, you just spent hundreds of minerals and hundreds of gas to kill just minerals, which it might be worth it, but there's a little bit too much math and surprisingly high amounts of finesse. That's why, much like the Archon, not great early, but as time goes on and the income goes up, becomes a lot better. But it, it's got to stay down here for now. Now, the Banshee. The Banshee's job has been somewhat replaced since um, Wings of Liberty. The Banshee as a air to ground with cloak. Unfortunately, there's a lot of built-in detection that the other races and Terran have uh, in many builds. The Banshee's just going to kind of... Uh, it, it feels like it should be a B. It does. But it it just is not. For the cost, it just doesn't get as much done as other options. Like a Liberator is much less micro-intensive. It's cheaper. doesn't require a tech lab. Um, it, it can bench like twice as much. Like What else do you want? It, it technically has an anti-air attack, though I nobody's tested that. Uh, it's not a bad option. And now... Like, there are better options out of the start point. There are better options. Like, the next one coming up. It was a meme. And then uh, it it became the strategy, especially in Terran versus Earth. Battle cruisers. They can attack while moving, finally. They figured out that technology. Oh, my God, it's amazing. It became the go-to build in TVZ. In fact, you, you might still be working off my guide from it a couple years ago. Got some nerfs. Uh, longer cooldowns, a little bit harder to jump away safely, the overall damage. Uh, it's still a very good, especially in the Metal Leagues. I'm going to have to put it in A.
I if I'm really thinking about it, especially mid metal here, we're in in leagues. Uh, we're kind of trending towards a more MMR based system. So when I say gold, what I mean is more like three thousand, like twenty seven hundred, twenty eight, twenty nine, three k MMR. Uh, you might be like Winter. You don't know anything about MMRs, and I might not. But that's what I'm thinking with that. We're we're aiming two k to three k with this, which actually covers about fifty percent of players. So. Uh, hopefully you're one of those 50% or this inspires you. The battle cruiser, it's expensive. A lot of players will build a battle cruiser and then that they've built a battle cruiser and then now they're off playing uh, a battle cruiser MOBA, like that one campaign mission. Uh, which can work because it is quite a capital ship. Against Zerg, it isn't. It, it's still very good against the Zerg, especially the select all army Zergs who don't really have anything but queens set up early. You might be able to make it work. It does suffer from that tunnel vision you can get, but against Protoss, not an incredible choice. Against Terran, also, you know what? I got to bump it down. I talked myself out of it. It's down to a B. It's a strong, like it'd be a strong borderline S here for me in TVZ, Terran versus Zerg, but... The other matchups, it, it is more in line with things like the Banshee, where it just has too many counters that are too cost-effective. So I'm, I'm going to put it out of B. The Broodlord. Yeah, that, no. No, don't. Uh, that's going to go XD tier because it's, I don't know how quickly you can get Broodlords, but it's not quick enough to even qualify for this. It's a no. The Carrier. Not... As limited as the Broodlord, but it it goes in the C tier of like, oh my god, he has a carrier. And then the six interceptors die to the three missile turrets your opponent just decided to build because they are, think they're still in a campaign mission, and there you go. Colossus. Colossus. The iconic unit of StarCraft II featured on all the box art. It's not an early game unit. Like, every once in a while, you'll get a Nina or a Zest, which are, like, it's, it's kind of like swallowing a flaming sword. Um, one, what could go right? Uh, two, don't try this, you know, don't, wherever you are, don't. So, for many of the same reasons, the carrier, Colossus, is not an XD, but it's definitely not your first pickup. Corruptor is an XD. It, it technically... No, no. Cyclone. Cyclone, okay. Now, this is your go-to in everything but TVZ. So that's not an S tier. But I think having a Cyclone will solve a lot of headaches for many players. Uh, many Terrans against Protoss and against Terran. Cyclone... You got your single target anti-air lock-on. What are some of the most annoying things? Small amounts of air. You got a void ray, or you got a banshee. A battle it, cyclones counter battle cruisers because they can lock on and then technically outrange them. You might be like Yamato Cannon. Well, if he built something that costs more than a command center, and then he got an upgrade that costs more than the cyclone to kill a cyclone, you know what? I'll take that trade. The Cyclone, uh, it, it is just doesn't really have a place early game against Zerg. But against Protoss and against Terran, having a Cyclone or two is almost never bad. I'm going to put it in the A tier just because it is, it, you, you, it's hard to go wrong with it. The worst part of the Cyclone is it drives faster than most of your other units walk or fly. Uh, and thus, if you aren't paying some attention to it when you A-click across the map, well, you know what happens. Dark Templar. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Mm. A. I, I hate that. I, I, okay, I don't hate. You know what? Actually, I think I do. But no matter what we seem to do, the DTs keep coming back, and there's no reason, they're not, I I wish, even in, it, it's not like it gets better or worse, at, at the highest higher levels, they're still great, because people are min-maxing their builds, 
At the lower levels, they'll probably have a bunch of detection, but you, like, someone gets a hint of a Dark Shrine or sees one DT, and you know they're staying in their base for the next 10 minutes. It's an A. Only, and the only reason it's not S, and there will be S, okay, there will be S, uh, is just simply because there is, like, it, it, the only downside is the cost and the tunnel vision. Uh, if you can at least make sure you get your gateways up behind it, like five or six gates minimum on two bases, you get some DTs in and around poking and prodding and maybe even getting some kills, uh, you're going to heavily annoy it's It's just a solid early game opener. Much to my dismay, more often than not. Uh, <laughs> So, it is, yeah, DTs are good. Mm. Disruptor. Suffer, and it's it's nearly, like, it's a splash damage unit out of the robo, requires a robo bay. And those units go in the C tier, as in, like, technically it's not useless, but you probably shouldn't try this at home. Drone. Yes, the workers are in here. The drone just doesn't have the utility of the other workers to be an annoying early game unit. Like, every once in a while, you bring out those proxy hatches, stuff like that. Wow, I didn't realize how many bad early game units there are. Uh, C tier is, you can, do, uh, you can do something with it. But you probably shouldn't if you're actually interested in improving. In my humble opinion of 11 years of StarCraft, the drone is not, well... Though I have Drone Rush to Masters, and that's a whole other video. Uh, it is not your ideal early game unit for practicing a solid early mid-game build. <laughs> and neither is Ghost. Ghost, there are, there are options. I don't recommend Ghost. It's a very niche thing. Um, you're going to get canceled just like the game named after him. Like, just... Every once in a while, it works out, and you feel like a genius, but the rest of the time, not so much. Hellion. S. Now, S, I want to put an asterisk there, because this is a unit, like, if you're learning Terran, and this is kind of the theme of this, you you can't tunnel vision it. Like that That is the big weakness of many of these potentially good units is how easy they are to tunnel vision. It's the early game. But Hellions against Terran, against Zerg, and against Protoss have use up against things like Adepts, up against other Hellions or Reapers, which is the most common early game Terran versus Terran. And then, of course, against Zerglings and, like, like Helly Reaper Hellion has been a staple of Terran versus Zerg since uh, Raynor was seven years old so uh whatever 11 years ago was that is the hellion asterisk is a great early game unit you don't want to overdo it you're like the strat is not go hellions but having some hellions like four to like well two to six depending on the match or probably two or three against terran and protoss uh and not necessarily every game but the thing is you can break them out they have a lot of versatility they're good against a lot of stuff. They only cost minerals. You know what Hellions are. Hellbats, on the other hand, are a bit more of a deal. They're kind of okay against Zerg. So, for similar reasons to the Battlecruiser, it goes in the B tier. Kind of okay against Zerg. Against other races, it's even worse than the Battlecruiser, for comparison. Like, you don't... The Hellbats... Even, even the silly stalker players... Um, we'll laugh it off. It's just not a thing. Swarm hosts. I, I think I have to give it a C. Like, there are options, but... Eh. Why do we still have this text on the screen? People can't read anyways. There you go. Hydras are also... Well... I have to put Hydras at a B tier because there's a whole lot of the, uh, the, there's the German taxi builds, which are a little different. Uh, we'll get into that. 
But Hydras find themselves into the early mid game. Uh, usually not the early game, not like the first unit you're building, but Hydras will find a place sometimes. And and it's not the worst choice, though. It's probably not your first one either. Same kind of go. Well, I got to put Immortals at A. Immortals, like, if they got Battlecruiser, if they got Void Ray, and maybe if they're rushing Mutas. But there's almost no scenario where you're like, you can have an Immortal or something else, and you don't take the Immortal. It's just great against Protoss. Uh, it shuts down those silly Stalker push. It's, it, it's called an Immortal for a reason. It, it's your staple Robo unit, mostly, especially because the other Robo Bay locked units like the Colossus and the Disruptor, you're just not getting them early. So if you want to go Robo, and I think probably you should, uh, having at least a couple of mortals before going for a third can sometimes make you feel a little safer and be a little safer. Don't, don't be too safe, though, because that's also dangerous. Life is hard. Infestors. No. Technically, but no, don't. <laughs> Liberator. Now, this is a tough one. It's A or B. I want to put it at A just because it's a, it's a relatively simple unit. It's easy to use. Uh, it doesn't require an add-on on your, on your starport. It is kind of expensive, but the amount of, of damage you can do with a singular Liberator is a little disgusting. Now, it, it, it's the early game. Once again, i got to give you the uh, tunnel vision is an issue. Um, you can't just fight in ahead of your army or it'll die, stuff like that. But it's a good, solid early game choice. Lunkers. Oh, lurkers. I, I, it's not, you can't rush lurkers. It's just too much, too expensive, and before hive tech, lurkers are not much. I gotta put it on the C tier, because it's much, it's much more realistic than, like, Broodlord and Fester as an early game choice, but uh, that's the technically yes, but actually no tier, so. Marauder. Now, now a big misconception I see from a lot of, a lot of Terrans in the Metal Leagues is thinking that Marines and Marauders are good units. They are not. They need friends. They need upgrades. They need a lot of tender, loving care. Marines and Marauders in the early game are... A brute force tool at best. A lot of the things you can do with a lot of Marines and Marauders can easily be solved with a cheaper and more effective combination of things like Liberator, Hellion, Battlecruiser. Now, you might be like, well, I want to go Bio. And uh, if you ever watch a pro Terran game, uh, I mean, there are plenty of Bio curious players, but there's also... Sometimes Terran players will go to 115 supply or so of whatever until they finally decide on their build, which is why uh, I got to put Marauders in the B tier alongside Marines. They're, they're like, you have proxy operative. We're just kind of assuming you're not proxying for most of this. This is not a how to cheese, like, like, do I really need to rank? Well, we'll see how this tier list does I've, I've heard tier lists are quite popular based on how many youtube keeps recommending me for other games i can subscribe uh so here we are i didn't think i would talk this long we're barely halfway through let's keep it going medivacs gotta go alongside their most uh standard units you got marine marauder medivac of course the medivacs can be used for the hellions it can be used for widow mines um, but overall, microing Hellions and uh, using Medivacs early is probably not as useful as having a Liberator, a uh, Cyclone, some of those utility units that having one is great, but having three is eh. Because later on, having one Medivac is eh. And three Medivacs are like, okay, now there you go. <laughs> Mothership. <sighs> Don't try this at home. Mutalisk. A little more realistic. 
Like rushing mutas, I it's almost an A tier. It's just part of the reason you don't see as many mutas, though they're kind of making a comeback, especially at the pro level, in Legacy of the Void, is simply by the time you can get mutalists out, the economies are already high enough to really have that next level of tech and production. So uh, what do I mean by that? Like when, when back in Wings of Liberty, mutas would come out, sometimes there wouldn't even be things like medevacs for Marines. Nowadays, even if you're rushing mutas, it's very likely they're going to have stim, they're going to have medevacs, that's counteracted by the ability of the Zerg to get more hatcheries and more drones and all that. But things just start up quickly and, and going straight to mutas without having either a stable economy or some sort of ground army. It's risky. Uh, the B tier is good but risky. The C tier is good but very, very risky. Or, okay, not one very. One very. I want to edit that part. We're going to edit it out. We do editing now. At least the thumbnail, the arrow. Anyway, okay, sorry. Um, what was I? Oh yeah, mutalisk, a mutalisk, observer. Uh, they're like you shouldn't need an observer early. You don't rush observers, but like it's an observer. The oracle. So, the oracle is one of the best units in the game. It's a Swiss Army knife. It does whatever you need it to do. You need to kill workers. There you go. You need to have some potential defense. You got revelation for detection. That's why the observer's in the B tiers, because the oracle exists. Uh, it is, the thing is, the, big, the biggest weakness is how much you have to actively control it. It was recently, and by recently I mean like a year and a half ago, changed so that revelation is on about the, the tag ability that lets you detect and just track units. It only lasts about 12 seconds, but it's only on about a 20-second cooldown. So you got to have, I usually hotkey it on 6, which is outside. Like I have production, uh, army in production, 1 through 5, and then Oracle on 6. So at least I can pretend like I'm going to control it occasionally. It does take micro, but if you can get the hang of it, like just like the Hellion, it's a staple of the early game. In every matchup, there's no bad matchup. Uh, you can make it work against Protoss, Terran, and Zerg. Terran is probably the riskiest because of Widow Mines and just other basic anti-air. Um, Overlords, XD, Overseers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they exist. I mean, I I guess. You know what? Actually, no, no, no. I'm, what, am I, what am I saying? Overlords are B-tier. I can't believe I almost glossed over that. Overlord drops for the S-tier unit that Zerg is finally going to get coming up. I'll let you take a guess. Uh, you probably knew this one was coming. But um, just their their existence as a transport vehicle for the best Zerg unit is I bumps them from XD to B. Of course, like, you need Overseers, but like the build does not go Overseers unless you're trying to crash their or your computer. That's another video. Go check that one out, too. Phoenixes. Solid choice, but I think compared to other options in the Metal Leagues, this could easily be an A. Like, Phoenixes are never bad. Sorry, Roddy. Well, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, because Phoenix is wunderbar. I don't think that's Dutch. Anyways, um, but Phoenixes, I got to put them at a B. I think, I think the amount of control they require and the investment makes it hard to get much else done even at the higher level, let, like not too far below the pro levels, Phoenixes still take a lot of uh, uh, babysitting to make sure they're useful. Um, another unit that takes a lot of babysitting to make sure it's useful, the Warp Prism. I am very hard-pressed to not put this at S. The Warp Prism is the largest potential warp thorn in the side of every player of every race. Uh... Warp prisms for over a decade have started and ended games. It, once again, I, I guess everything in the S tier has to have an asterisk. You need to be able to know when to use it, or at least a good idea of when to use it, while still at least building probes and pylons and stuff like that at home. But the warp prism is your home away from home. Like, it is, you can warp in plenty, you can just drop straight in. 
Uh, technically, there's some repower options. There's micro potential, and it's relatively simple micro. I, I do have a guide on drops as well. We're just This is essentially just a video to promote all my other videos. So I hope you've made it this far, and if so, you've probably already watched them. So I'm uh, running over something. I lost my train of thought. We need to edit these things out. Is this what you do when you edit? You just take all these parts and you just pretend they never happen and that every time on the first take you just do it live? That's ridiculous. No one would do it live. It's the internet. You have every opportunity to make up whatever you want. Or you could just build more probes. But even one probe, like not even as a meme, the both mental and physical damage that a probe can do. One probe, not even that well managed. Sometimes the worse it's managed, the more, more dangerous. You know, everyone's afraid. Just the fear effect. More than Dark Templar, more than Zerglings, uh, more than Battlecruiser. I think a probe, in, in terms of amount of units to blood pressure increases of players across the globe, uh... I think the probe has by far the highest ratio. Like, probes have been stressing people out for 20 plus years, and they're not going to stop anytime soon. Everything, all this stuff uh, here begins and ends with potentially a single probe. The threat of a cannon rush. A cannon rush is still the probably the most... Uh, viable, really early game cheese. Proxy Rex is up there, but Cannon Rush still can be done. It's not easy uh, to do it well, and a, a lot of players will panic, but those that don't can pick it apart. It's just like, like the probe is a minimum A tier. It might be S, but I can't put it on S. There's already too many Protoss units. Uh, I, I don't want to be biased, obviously. So, But speaking of S tier units... This is unironic. I know, like we all, Brenda and her queens. If you ever watch Rainer, the world champion, queen. Every matchup, queens against Protoss. You got Void Rays, queens. You need to defend against Warp Prism, Hellions, Liberators, other queens. I don't know what happened there, but <laughs> queens. It is just building more queens. So many Zergs, and and if you ever watch Angry Coach. More videos. There you go. We're doing so we're hitting all the marks. Um, where do I spend my minerals? So many Zerg players in the metal leagues on that three k m mark, give or take. I have all these minerals. What do I do? No, not Zerglings. Not Zerglings. Queens. You do have to learn to use control groups. If you ever watch uh, those top tier pros as Zerg control groups, that's the key. Uh, Cyril and Rainer both usually have. All their queens on a hockey, because if shit hits the fan or a warp prism shows up, which is even worse, then you need to get the queens over there. The knitting crew has to be called to an emergency session, and, and while their knitting needles may be nerfed uh, slightly, it still outranges... Well, well, queens have more range than a hydra unupgraded. They only cost minerals. They don't cost larva. Uh, and they get better the more you have... Just build more queens, okay? You have you have minerals. I I I I'm begging you. Please, Zerg, save the queens. All right, Ravagers. Eh, there's there's options early in every matchup. They're not like a risky choice. I just there's just not many great like lining up. Make sure you have show flyer helper in game settings, by the way, so that way you can actually see where to aim at things like Overlords or Liberators. Uh, you see a lot of players aiming directly at the Liberator. That's not really how it works. Um, but uh, just not the best choice, not ideal. Uh, Ravens, Ravens, S tier. Okay, so much like every, you're, you're kind of seeing a trend. The utility spellcasters for each race. You got queens, you got oracles, you got ravens. S tier. Um, you can build them in every matchup, probably better. And like ravens, it's essentially required in TVT, especially at the higher levels. You got 
what do you what do you want? You want Dorito dust anti armor missile? You got it. You got auto turrets for potential harass. You got detection, uh, and you have interference matrix, which can be used. Especially remember, Protoss also has mechanical units. Colossi, Immortals. Technically, you can use the interference matrix on psionic units like Archons or Queens, but don't don't go Ravens to counter Queens. Queens counter everything. Queens are unstoppable. People need to keep making more queens. But until they figure that out, ravens are still pretty good. Uh, you don't have to scan for creep and all that. But definitely the we, the um, most optional, I guess, in uh, TVZ. That is where you see it the least. Reaper. I mean, I, I don't even know where to put this. Because you always make, like... But it, it's not an S tier. It's not, it like... Many players are moving away from the Reaper now. Why? Because it's just... You, so many players have gotten so good in every matchup of denying information to it. Against Zerg, you build the Reaper to make sure there's no Zerglings coming at your base. Against Protoss, the Reaper is now... It was eventually... At some point, it was for scouting, but nowadays, Protoss just... And I don't think at the lower levels, they're going to stop the Reaper more actively, but... I wouldn't rely, like, one Reaper, go scout, good to go. TVT, maybe do a three Reaper build. You can check out spawningtool.com for builds, or just watch Big Game, if you can uh, take in his colossal bulk. Moving on. Roaches. Eh. Good, not great. Like, every matchup, good, not great. They're roaches, okay? You build a lot of them, get up in there. You hope for the best. Not much micro potential, not hard to use, but not hard to counter either. So, SCVs. I'm going to have to put them at a B. Because on defense and offense, the tactic boys for repair, proxy rexing is on the table, and for defense, like pulling the boys, they still come in above drones uh, as, a, as an early game unit slash build choice. It's it's kind of a flexible definition, but uh, it, it comes in with a B. Sentries. Sentries do need to be used more by more people. Guardian shield reducing two range damage. Everywhere it is hallucination scouting, but it 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 wants to be an A, and this would be an A if I was doing an all leagues tier list, but. It comes in at a B because uh, it's kind of just something you should get, not something you should go for. I, I hope that made sense. Stalkers, I, I, I do want to put them further down. But they are kind of important in the early game. Just one for countering other stalkers in PvP and for basic anti-air. But so many players, they build five, six stalkers. They shoot up, they shoot down. What's not to love? Well, the fact that they're the most expensive gateway unit with technically less DPS than anything but a sentry. They're just not a better choice against anything except minimal air units early. You're not going to blink micro like parting, okay? Just in the mid-game, build some archons. Stalkers need to be in the, they They got to be up there, but I, I don't have to be happy about it. And I don't think the build should be go stalkers, I think. If needed, you have stalkers, but otherwise, they're better options. Siege tanks. Kind of are... The B tier is like, sure, sure. Uh, they, there's good choices with them. They can work. Uh, they're not so much an early game unit as more of a mid game, but they get you to the mid game. The siege tank is a boring, solid choice. So, uh, uh, speaking of... Uh, how's your anniversary going? Was that mean? Or was that too much of a stretch? Por que no los dos? Tempest. Uh, there was a time where maybe they make it to B. But it still just suffers from the same things as the carrier, as the mothership. It's just too goddamn expensive and too easy to counter. In almost all cases. High Templar are very similar. Um, in that storm early, we're assuming storm, and archons are just not something you need in that 
first couple bases the vast majority of the time in any matchup. The Thor... Uh, it feels like it'd be like a B-, minus, but it it just it's hard to justify the cost unless you're already going for other units um it really is it is hard to justify it so uh it, it just too big too thick too expensive save it for later much like this almost makes it it's just all the stuff locked behind hive tech or some ridiculous amount it feels like it should be, uh, you know what, I, I'm, well, there's a dream, there's a dream, it's more realistic to rush ultras than brood lords, not by much, but there you go, all right, viking, actually, the, the here's the hidden gem, vikings, not just for their anti-air potential, tvz, kill overlords, uh, tvp and tvt, air control, but on the ground, they have plus damage to mechanical, which includes SCVs and probes. Again, Zerg, they're good for clearing overlords. And against Terran and Protoss, they both have both, like, air control is everything in TVT. That's why the Raven is up here. Um, and having just basic anti-air is super key in TVP, as well as some potential harass, which, once again, all this assumes you need control groups. But... It's not S, like you're not going Viking every game, but it's a solid choice to get at least two to four of them usually. Um, maybe just one in TVZ, but two in TVP and maybe maybe four in TVT. But you can almost, it, with, with a little bit of tender loving care and maybe a little bit of patience before going full Optimus Prime on the Transformer, you're good to go. Vipers. You ever seen the car bot? Yeah, that I wanted the Viper laugh. That's what I'm doing right now. I, I was gonna try it. I for a split second I thought about it. <sighs> Moving on to the iconic. They named the whole expansion after this one. Void Ray. Now I want to put this in the B tier. The Void Ray uh, got a discount. It's only 200 minerals now. Um. It, like, it's not S, contrary to the belief of the entirety of this Silver League. The question is A or B. Uh, void Rays are not a bad choice in any matchup. Getting a Void Ray against Zerg, similar to a Viking. Uh, you clear out the Overlords, and on top of that, you threaten to actually be going Void Rays. Against Terran, it's a little weaker, as it is uh, also against Protoss, as there are better options to counter, like the Phoenix. Uh, and just the other basic built-in anti-air. It's just the threat of the Void Ray. They're still good. It, they're still good. They actually drop off over time, but the, their strength is in the early, early mid-game um, for the most part. And then in the very late game as part of like an anti-air composition, but we're not talking about that right now. Much like, well, actually something that's always amazing, the Widowmine is, is in A-tier as well. It just, the Widowmine, as much as I like to make fun of it and get frustrated by it, it's a great choice, but it's literally and an unironically hit and miss. It takes a, a significant amount of control, even though it seems like it doesn't. Like, making sure those Widowmines get where they need to go is a little harder than it looks. And it can backfire as well as it takes factory time away from other things that you might need for defense or offense. It, it can back, like, I'm talking it down from the S tier here, really. Jimmy, why? No, we, we all know what this is by now. There's only two units left. Uh, so Widowmines find themselves as a solid early game choice, but maybe not every game, and uh, not in every scenario, like... Up against a tank push, Widowmines, not going to be great for you. Um, but up against Oracles, 
uh, or Void Rays. You got a strong choice up against Zerg for the most part, unless it's something like a Ravager Allen, also a good choice. But it's not always the, it's like not an always go-to option, like a Queen or, or, or to an extent, Oracle or Raven. The Zealot, now, the, the Zealot with charge and the Zealot without charge is like Captain America before he became Captain America. I'm going to assume we're just, we don't have a Twilight for charge yet. Like, we're pre-upgrades like that, and that puts the Zealot at a B. The Zealot is like, I literally don't have a cyber core done, and I need something in this wall. Or there's an engineering bay at my natural, and this Terran is a dick. Um, but otherwise, unless you're building gateways in their base or recalling via a Nexus, Florencio, eh. Same goes for Zerglings, actually. Zerglings, Zerg rushing with Zerglings is one of the most, like, Zerg, Zerg, <laughs> there's Zergling drone rushes. Um, there's, uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of options, but Zerglings are just, you're spending a lot of larva. Which is a resource. You got to think of larva like a resource. You're spending a lot of larva on building something that only works essentially if your opponent's not paying attention. Like you can run past the non existent wall of, of uh, Protoss and Terrans all the way up to the Platinum League, but when you finally hit one, it's going to become a lot more difficult. And Banelings are not going to be your strong follow up. If I had a dollar for every time I saw a Metal League Zerg, Go for a bunch of Zerglings, hit a wall, and then throw down a Baneling Nest. I'd I'd have a a not insignificant amount of dollars. So usually you're gonna want to think a little further ahead than scratching your head against a wall. Um, it's just not a super great early game unit. It's not always your best choice. You've got better options. Um, so that actually we wrapped it up with the most basic units. But just a quick recap. Oh my god, this went way too... I, I talk so much. You Thank you for making it this far, I think. I hope somebody did, but... Wow. Okay, well... No time management skills. Uh, but, Hellions. Oracles, Warp Prisms, Queens. The solitary S-tier early game unit, because they're just that good. And Ravens in the S-tier. Adepts, Cyclones. Well, well for Protoss, as Adepts, DTs, Immortals probes and void race in the a tier cyclones liberator viking and uh reaper in the oh i'm i'm realizing now there's not even a single if i had to bump up just just like for sake of balance here and pretending like i'm not anti zerg it's just queens are that good queens filling a lot of the gap here uh and that's why the other units are A tier, is because they're needed for the other races that don't have such a great built in unit. Honestly, I'm bumping Zerglings up only to meet our diversity quota, though. So, it, it's borderline. Eh. Eh. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll pretend, it. We'll, we'll pretend I agree with that. Um, but yeah, you've got your basic air units that are usually solid, your anti-air units for similar reasons, and things you probably sp shouldn't spend too much time microing but do benefit from it. And then you've got your more niche units like uh, Battlecruisers, Hellbats, Hydras, Bio, for Terran, Mutas, Observer, Overlord, Phoenix, Ravager, Roach, SCV, Sentry, Stalkers, Tanks, and Zealots. And then you have your, I'm trying to make a YouTube video, but this is going to take a few tries builds, which are Archons, Banelings, Banshees, Carriers, Colossi, Ruptors. Well, some of these are definitely more viable than others, but all of them are risky and take a significant level of micro, um, which may very well take away from your macro. And then you have your, it, it, it's almost physically impossible to get in the early game, which are pretty much Zerg Hive Tech and everything nearby that. So, um, I need to get better at cutting these down, but thank you for watching what seems to have been the better part of an hour uh, of this tier list. I will do my best to make it a little uh, quicker next time, assuming 
there is a next time and what what kind of things do you want me to ramble about next time and if you enjoyed this rambling or didn't but made it this far to the sellout part like and subscribe and ring the bell and check out all the videos of which i referenced and then didn't timestamp. um and you have an amazing day thank you for watching good luck have fun and stay